Donald Trump takes a commanding lead over Joe Biden. Congressman James Comer of Kentucky promises worse to come for the sitting president. And Representatives Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates invite Tara Reid to testify before Congress about her allegations against President Biden. We've got a lot to cover on this May 9th edition of The Breakdown. Before we get started, if you get to the end of the video and you find it informative, and I kind of believe you will, please consider subscribing to the channel with the button below and clicking on the notification bell. In perhaps one of the worst starts to a campaign in all of history, the incumbent president of the United States is already trailing the Republican frontrunner, Donald Trump. This may not be shocking, except that it is an ABC Washington Post poll. So they likely oversampled Democrats, and yet they still show Donald Trump in a seven-point lead, comfortably outside the poll's margin for error. So how did Joe Biden respond to the news that he's been polling negatively? Well, in a recent interview, and a pretty rare one at that on MSNBC, here's what he had to say. Why do you think your polling is where it is? Well, I don't think people, by the way, every major one who won re-election, their polling numbers were mine are now. Put polling aside no, then, right? No, Sentiment in this country, despite no, all these wins, is I, not I, very I, good. I, all they've heard is negative news for three years. Everything is negative. And I'm not being critical of the press, but you turn on the television, the only way you're going to get a hit is if there's something negative. You, you know, you don't, anyway. By the way, Joe, can I tell you something? Never has a president had ratings as low as yours at this point, ever, ever. So Americans in general, not just Republicans, to be clear, according to that ABC WAPO poll, they just don't like Joe Biden because all they've been hearing about him is negative news. Well, Mr. President, given that the media is in your pocket, I think it's safe to say the only way we're hearing nothing but negative news about you is if there is nothing but negative news, as has been the case from the disgraceful botched Afghanistan withdrawal that saw billions of dollars worth of ordnance left in the hands of fifth century barbarian terrorists, to a border crisis of unfathomable proportions, to a post-COVID economy that would have recovered if President Biden had just sat back and relaxed, but instead our economy's on the verge of collapse. Joe Biden is fulfilling the prophecy of former President Barack Obama, who said, never underestimate Joe's ability to mess things up. Boy, has he messed things up. You know, I know it apparently that a lot of Democrats know it. And heck, I bet even Jill Biden knows it. But you know who doesn't know it? Joe Biden. Even though he claims to know just about everything there is to know. Why would an 82-year-old Joe Biden be the right person for the most important job in the world? Because I have acquired a hell of a lot of wisdom. I know more than the vast majority of people. I'm more experienced than anybody who's ever run for the office. And I think I've proven myself to be honorable as well as also effective. And let's throw in humility there. Why not? After all of these other great qualities that he has and what I find interesting, he says he's the most honorable. Well, as we will soon find out, hmm, may not be quite accurate on some of those things. On top of all of his incompetence, there's the issue of Joe's clear corruption. Poor guy just can't cut himself a break. Last week saw the announcement that a highly credible IRS whistleblower had stepped forward claiming to have documents, documents regarding a bribery scheme that Joe Biden had taken part in. And don't miss Huckabee's show this weekend on TVN to hear some firsthand news about a story the mainstream media probably will never tell you. Congressman James Comer of Kentucky offered an update to that situation on Sunday, saying, Wednesday will be a very big day for the American people in getting the facts presented to them so that they can know the truth. The mainstream media, uh, they're still managing to avoid covering the worst influence peddling charges ever leveled against a president. I'm sure they just haven't heard about it yet. And of course, the Justice Department won't appoint a special counsel, no matter how obviously one is needed. Now that this IRS whistleblower has come forward to say that a document proves President Biden took money in exchange for policy decisions, it's apparently up to congressional investigators to connect the dots. Last Friday, Representative Comer said that nine members, nine members of the Biden family had received payments from a web of LLCs that had received payments from our adversaries all over the world. They take the whistleblower claim very seriously, he said, because it fits a pattern of behavior with the Bidens 
that shows up in their bank records. In addition to seeing that pattern, Comer went on to say, we know the FBI has the document, adding that the Biden family received big money from the Chinese Communist Party. In other words, the entities that paid them were state-owned. The committee also sent a subpoena to FBI Director Christopher Wray to testify in person and to produce the document in question, which describes an alleged criminal scheme involving then-Vice President Biden and a foreign national relating to the exchange of money for policy decisions. Congressman Comer announced that his committee, in conjunction with Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley, is planning a press conference this Wednesday morning to present their findings, including evidence from that highly credible whistleblower that President Biden did participate in a quid pro quo scheme for himself and his family. Remember that term, quid pro quo? Democrats used to think that an unsupported allegation of it was ground to impeach a president. The committee, he said, Comer, plans to disclose many of the LLCs and many of the different transactions involving the various Biden family members. These LLCs, he alleged, were set up in a very complex way to hide the sources of the payments and also to evade taxes. That's against the law, by the way. Congressman Comer, who used to be the director of a bank, said there is a term for all of this, money laundering. They believe the document holds the truth and Comer maintains he knows 100% that it exists. We've given the FBI until May the 10th to produce that document, he said. Well, this would explain why the press conference has been scheduled for Wednesday, May 10th. The FBI should not try to charge Hunter Biden before then, he cautioned. Now, while the DOJ was ignoring this, Comer's committee was using its subpoena power to gather bank documents and meeting with former Biden associates and other whistleblowers. We know exactly what this family was doing, Comer said, and we know what the federal investigation appears to be planning, which is to charge Hunter with a slap on the wrist a drop in the bucket when we consider the many crimes that he's committed. The DOJ has a whole menu of options, he said, for prosecuting this family. This goes right up to the president himself. We don't believe, Comer said, that these countries were paying the Biden family for nothing. We believe they were getting a return on their investment. But other than his broad statement, Comer is still tight-lipped on details, saying it's going to come out in tomorrow's press conference when actual bank records will be presented. Continuing the dogpile on Biden's image, old allegations against President Biden are resurfacing. Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates have sent an invitation to Tara Reid to testify before Congress. You may recall that in mid-2020, in the heat of the presidential campaign, Biden's former secretary, Tara Reid, came forward with very serious allegations of sexual assault against Joe Biden. Those allegations were, of course, swept under the rug as quickly as possible by the media. Representatives Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates haven't forgotten, though. Following their invitation and on the heels of the arrest of Dr. Gal Laft, a co-director of a Washington, D.C.-based think tank who claims to have incriminating information on the Biden family, Tara Reid posted a clear and quite frankly, a chilling statement on Twitter. It reads thusly, I want to make something clear. If something happens to me, all roads lead to Joe Biden. Joe Biden and DNC political machine threats, bullying, and intimidation over the last three years will not work. I'm not suicidal. I should not be under investigation, nor am I a foreign agent. I am a private citizen. I was a former staffer of Joe Biden's that has chosen to step forward to tell the truth. I will testify under oath in Congress if asked to do so, and I will tell what happened and what I know. The Biden corruption must end. That's the end of her quote. Now, if she's allowed to testify before Congress, I've got just one thing to say to Tara Reid, barred from a commenter on Twitter. Tara, make sure you leave milk and cookies for the IRS agents who will visit your home while you're testifying. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel, clicking the notification bell below, be sure to leave a like. Also, be sure to turn into the live stream this Friday so I can answer all of your most uncomfortable questions. And if you want more of my news analysis and commentary, you can certainly sign up for my newsletter at mikehuckabee.com. It comes to your email inbox twice a day, and here's the good news, it's totally free. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.